here we are in Brookside, in Chestnut Ridge, Spring Valley, New York. And uh, maybe the first thing you can do is uh, tell me your name. <laughs> I'm Glenn Williamson. As, as, as though I wouldn't know, of course yes. I know. <laughs> for, for the audience. And, yes. yes, and of course, yeah. we are in a very special place and uh, in very cir special circumstances. So what I'd like you to do in, first... In the midst of the fourth mystery drama here exactly. in Spring Valley. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can say which role you're playing. I'm playing Johannes, Johannes Tomasius. Okay. And um, uh, tell me, how, how did your life evolve to get you to this point? In other words, um, young <laughs> people always question. need to find out you know, how do they find their path and how do they find their passion, their destiny? And uh, this is supposed to be yeah. a little bit in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Because Actually, my destiny, at the, at the age of 21, I was put right in the middle of anthroposophy through an exchange program that my father was working with. And my father was not an anthroposophist. None of us knew anything about anthroposophy. But uh, my father was working at a community college, and for the summer he was working with an exchange program that brought young European students to California for the summer and sent young Californian students to Europe for the oh, summer wow. to work in department stores, grocery stores, hotels, amusement parks. And uh, at the end of the summer, I met the, the Swiss man who my father had been working with, who'd been holding up the European side of the of the program and I told him that I was I was getting ready to transfer to the university and to create my own field of study combining religious studies with theater. I decided I wanted to study the origin of theater in various cultures through history. So when I told that to this man, he just looked at me and said, oh, well, I have six positions for stagehands at the Goethe Anum where they do Goethe's Faust, the only place in the world that does Goethe's Faust uncut, only place at that time, uh, and you have to go. That's what he said. And what was that his was, name? What was the name of that man? That was Gunter Zeefeld, and at some point, I really would like to thank him. I, wow! I, uh, but maybe he'll see the Maybe film. he'll see this. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Herr Zeefeld, for the for changing my life. There you go. Uh, so I that was September, and I went in May, and I had to learn German. That yeah. was the next thing he said. You have to go. All you have to do is learn German. Oh, that, that's no problem. So I had right? to learn German. I had to transfer to the university. I had to study Faust. I had to do some research on Switzerland. And I was supposed to read something about anthroposophy, which I did a little bit. I think I picked up occult science and couldn't really make much sense of it. And then there I was, right in the middle of anthroposophy at the Goethe Anum. At 21. For the summer, at age 21, yeah. And one of the first things that happened to me there was one night I was sitting in front of the house on the steps of the house where I was staying, a place called House Schurman, just up the hill from, from the big uh, hall of the, of the Goethe Anum building. Mm -hmm. And it was also a place where there were study groups and where s speech artists practiced. And one evening I was sitting on the steps and I was looking out at the sky and there were stars and, and uh, a woman stepped out. There was a whole group of people stepped out of a study group and a woman uh, looked up and said, das ist die Venus, that's oh, okay. Venus. Okay. And I, in my American accent, said, sind Sie sicher? I was somehow, I doubted her, I don't know why, I wanted to pick an argument. I said, are you sure? In German, my best bad German, sind Sie sicher? And she looked at me and she said, of course, in English, in American English, of course I'm sure, who are you? And that was Barbara Reynolds. <laughs> Oh so my. she really, she who is the director have, of, well, of she the, must these have plays been visiting now. her mum because her mum. She Maria, was just completing her Maria speech Reynolds training. Maria Reynolds was living there. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But Barbara had been there. She had just completed her speech training uh -huh. there in Dornoch. So she then really became a very good friend. She and I went up, ended up soon after that. I had a little bit of time before going back home to California, and she and I went to Greece, and she sort of led me around the ruins and sites in Greece. Mm -hmm. but So she really was my first personal introduction to anthroposophy, and it's obviously a deep part of our karma together sure looks to like be it. doing this play, to be doing all four of Steiner's mystery dramas. Wow. And you've been, uh, of course, with it right from the start, when, like four or five years ago? No, actually, I've been 
resisting, one could say. It just has been very clear to me in the last several years. I did play this role, Johannes, in the fourth play, the one we're doing right now, 15 years ago. Signe Schaefer played Maria, and um, they were, uh, Barbara had done the second, third, and fourth play, built, oh, she took up, took three years to build up each one. So that right. was a period of 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And then there was this idea from Virginia Cease at the Goethe Anum to bring all four mystery dramas in English for one conference, performed by different groups. Our production next year, as far as we know, will be the first time ever, ever. in the world yeah. that all four plays have been performed in English by the same company in one conference. Mm -hmm. But this, they were all performed in English in one conference, but by different groups. So a yeah. group came from Los Angeles, a group from Fair Oaks, California, we came from Spring Valley, and uh, a group of English actors did the second play in 1998 in, at the Goethe Anum. And I played Johannes. I oh. came in for that because Gregor Simon MacDonald, who had been playing Johannes, couldn't do it. So oh, I stepped I in at that I didn't point. know Gregor was doing yeah. that. Okay. But in the last several years, as, as Barbara's been doing a whole new cycle, of the plays, it's just been very clear to me that it was not for me to be involved. And there was always someone else quite capable to play Johannes. Yes. And I think at one point in the, the second play, um, uh, I almost, no, actually I think I had agreed to play Johannes and then I was uh, uh, having brunch with some friends and uh, I think yeah, Kevin Hines mentioned that, that Barbara was talking to him about playing Aramon and I said, Aramon, wait a minute, you should play Johannes. So he did. I, I stepped back and said, you play Johannes. He was wonderful. <laughs> so, and I was very, very happy to be in the audience. I love these plays, and it's been wonderful to be part of these conferences and to be in the audience and watch. And I just, you know, people would say, well, how come you're not up there? And I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm touring with my own plays. Yeah, you have. So I maybe you can say. I need to be there. They don't need me. And I'm very, very happy to be in the audience. But suddenly, I guess it was last December talking to John Alexandra, it suddenly became very clear. We managed to work it out and make it, make it possible also financially. Um, but it just suddenly became clear that this is That's the time and do. I'm so, I'm really very, it just as clear as it was that it was not for me to be involved before, it's just as clear now that I'm, just, I'm thrilled to, to, to do, play Johannes Tomasius through all four plays. It's daunting, as I'm sure Barbara has, has <laughs> emphasized. Yeah, and you know how many you. lines that is. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, don't I'm know how you people already. do it. Yeah. I mean, and I did the more, other Philia, and that was mm. bad enough in just one scene. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's a so, lot. Yeah. yeah. And Laurie and I are already preparing to do, uh, it's actually most of my scenes from all four plays. A major chunk. Do you think for, you will in, be in October already? Will you be taking them around a little bit, I think just that's, you that's and the her? Plan. Yeah, the two because of us. I think just that would be just tracing the relationship of of Maria and Johannes. Yeah, just those yeah. scenes yeah. to give people an introduction and an yeah. overview. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be really excellent. So maybe you can say something about your other plays and how you do with all of those. <laughs> well, I have seven plays up and running. I like to say, but it's pretty true right now. Laurie and I just did a tour in Britain and Ireland of the, our two two-person plays. We do our free rendering of Goethe's fairy tale of the green snake and the beautiful lily, which we call Refugee's Tale, right. which is the story out of which these mystery dramas grew. Okay. And we actually, on top of everything else, Laurie and I will be performing it at the beginning of the conference next year, on uh, top of everything okay, else. Okay. And then we do a, a play about ancient Greece that, uh, that I wrote, that I co-wrote with the uh, late film star and anthroposophist Mala Powers right, about right. the origins of theater out of the mysteries in Greece. Laurie and I continue to perform that. And then Laurie and I and a third actor performed the Gospel of John, the actor, actual text of the Gospel. Three yeah. actors, two chairs, and a table. And it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And I've seen it. Yeah. I, it's just, yeah. I can attest to it. It's, it yeah, so yeah, thank it's you. It's amazing. And yeah. then I have four solo pieces that I do that I continue to tour with. Story of Caspar Hauser, uh, two short stories by, by Kurt Vonnegut that I do as a one-man play, uh, a story I call The Incarnation of the Logos, which is the whole story of the childhood of Jesus that also brings in Buddha and Zarathustra and Moses and Osiris and Adonis yeah. and 
everybody. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. story. Yeah. And, uh, and then I tell the whole story of Faust, which obviously comes from my first karmic meeting of Anthroposophy and Doorknock. That, that story has stayed with me now for 30 years. And I tell the whole story of Goethe's Faust, parts one and two, in an hour and a half, including an intermission. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, I mean, I said, to, I said to I said to the devil. It's called Beat the Devil, and it won an award in the in an off Broadway solo theater festival. Wow! I'll have to see if I can get a link to that somewhere. Now, now um, uh, I said that to Laurie too. Uh, it, all of this didn't make you a millionaire, did it? No. <laughs> Somehow, I have been graced to be able to survive. I, I found ways that doing this. Well, I discovered that doing theater in New York, I worked for nine years with a collaborative group of, of, of actors in New York, and we would maybe sometimes almost barely break even, not paying ourselves anything. Yeah. And I discovered that by working, uh, first of all, working solo, although I've stretched that now, traveling with Laurie and mm -hmm. sometimes with David, and we've made that work also. Mm -hmm. but, but David Anderson. David Anderson, yeah. That, um, but that I could travel and, and, and tour and perform and, and make enough money to come home and pay my bills. Yeah, so I because you have to. supporting myself. Yeah. Have been for about 12 years, primarily. I have a little bit of other income, for a little sideline, but, uh, but primarily yeah. my I mean, performing it's... is supporting me. Yeah. I mean, I managed to live very frugally, frugally. and it's yeah. really possible, I think, only because I my, I mean, I would not be living as well on my own as I am because my partner has mm -hmm. some resources, and yeah. so I, I, I live in a very nice that, apartment that, with him. That in, helps, in, uh, yeah, Manhattan. that helps, that yeah. helps. Yeah. I mean, somehow, uh, you know, when I think of young people, um, it doesn't, and, and when I talk to them, uh, they, I think they sense that they cannot go for living in such a way that they become millionaires. That's not, a, th that shouldn't be the priority. Right, you have yeah. to fi follow yeah. your bliss, I yeah. suppose, you know, yeah. find your whatever it is that you need to do. So I'm very, yeah. very glad that you're doing what you're doing because Thank otherwise... You. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And now I need to go get some dinner and get ready for the performance. That's right. We're going so, to have the last part you. tonight. Thank you, Marianne. All right. Take care. Okay, thanks a lot.